Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 653 of the Juicebox Podcast. Today we'll be speaking with Janet. She is the mother of a young man who has type 1 diabetes, and he has recently left for college. Those things and much more will be discussed over the next hour. Please remember while you're listening that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your health care plan or becoming bold with insulin. Have you taken the T1D Exchange survey? It's at t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. Your answers to simple questions, which will take you, I'm going to say fewer than 10 minutes to complete, will help people living with type 1 diabetes. It also supports the show when you complete the survey. You need to be a U.S. resident who has type 1 or a U.S. resident who is the caregiver of a type 1 to complete the survey. T1DExchange.org forward slash juice box. This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. The podcast is also sponsored by Touched by Type 1. Learn more at touchedbytype1.org or follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Touched by Type 1's mission is to elevate awareness of type 1 diabetes, raise funds to find a cure, and inspire those with diabetes to thrive. So that's it whenever you're ready. Oh, okay. I just start talking. (laughs) This is my favorite part where people uncomfortably try to introduce themselves. Yes. Just, just tell me, book. tell me whatever you want me to know. Uh, okay, okay. My name is Janet. Um, I am a military spouse. I've been married for twenty five years, uh, fourteen moves in twenty five years. So that's fun. Um, my son uh, Leo has been diagnosed with type one. He was diagnosed just about a year ago. Well, actually, a little over a year ago. Um, I don't know what else to say now. Yeah, <laughs> he is, yeah. We are empty nesters uh, this time around. Um, we were living in Texas when he was diagnosed, and then uh, we got him all set up in college, and then we moved north, so we're now in Ohio. Wow. So I have two kids in college, and now we're trying to figure out this whole empty nester thing. Did you get married in 1996? I did. Oh, I was married in 96 is the only reason I know that, because I've also been married for 25 years. Okay. How old are you? I am 49. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I am so we could have been like friends in high school. We could have been. And uh, with the fine exception of you were apparently nowhere near me. And, okay. Uh, from. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm just, uh, we were at a wedding this past weekend and they did some sort of a dance where married couples dance and they, they kind of whittled you away by how long you were married uh, which I, I think is a fairly common thing at, at weddings. And uh, we got to the end and there were three couples left. I was still dancing. I was like, <laughs> my God, I'm old. <laughs> um, the, the the people who beat us were much older than us. So I was like, all right, well, I guess that's what I'm shooting for. Is that my goal? You know, so yeah, it should be. <laughs> uh, you think, right? Um, I have to ask you a question before we start about the diabetes stuff. Yeah. Okay. Is the empty nest stuff scary? It, you know, it's just odd. It, it's just like, you know, for so long, your schedule is built by these, you know, you're sitting in bleachers or you're driving or you're going to some activity or arranging some activity. And so now all of a sudden we have to kind of build our own schedule a little bit. And so, and then the constant of, you know, stalking your children when they're, you know, five states away and, wondering what they're doing. And so we're getting used to it. And some of it's really fun. Like my uh, husband went on a, a TDY, which is military version of a business trip um, a couple days ago. And I'm like, huh, I'm just going to buy my own plane ticket and join him because I can't, <laughs> you wow. know, so, that never so there's really 
good, good, goods and positives, and but also a little weird. Yeah, I I found myself. I'm, I'm beginning to lean into it now, even though Arden's just in high school. But school went back, and she's very active in things that are happening at the school, and she drives now, which is amazing. And you know, mm-hmm. so she's sort of in and out of the house, and doesn't need me for anything, you know, related to her waking or bathing or anything like that. I'm just like, last night, it was like midnight. Kelly's like, you gonna go to bed? I'm like, yeah, pretty soon. I don't have to record till noon tomorrow. And so I was like, you know, a little bit. I watched a little something. I fell asleep. I slept later than I usually do. I was like, huh, is this what it's going to be? This isn't bad. (laughs) Although my imagination tells me that at some point in the next couple of years, Kelly's going to kill me or kick me out of this house. That's... (laughs) You're going to need a different hobby. It's my (laughs) expectation. She's going to be like, oh, wow, look at him sleeping while I'm working. (laughs) So (laughs) anyway, um, that's that's pretty cool. Is your husband staying in for the I mean, he's obviously a a lifer, but how long does he keep going? Well, at this point, the Air Force will tell us (laughs) we were kind of at that point where, um, you know, if the the job he's either offered and we can say, you know what? Nope, that's not for us. Or um, how about this? And we say, yes, let's go. It's worth another couple, couple years. So um, we, we're at the, at that point where it's kind of a mutual decision between the, it's kind of hard to explain, I guess, but I get it. We basically are waiting, you know, for the next job. And if it comes, it comes and if it's not, okay, thank you for your service, you know, kind of thing. So we're at that point. So he's at the point where he, they may offer him something new. That thing may be at some place else, or they may just say, we, we're paying you way too much money. You've been here too long. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, actually it will. I mean, we will move. If if he does get offered another job, a next job, it will be at another location. Um, you know, we don't know how long we'll be here. It could be one year. It could be two. It could be three. We don't know. Um, such as such as the state of where he is right now. So um, the, the next job, you know, I don't know, it's just, it just gets really weird when you're at his point of his career, you know, the, the, it becomes really tight up at the top of the pyramid, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so we don't know. When we'll you, see. When you guys got married, what, what did he do? He was in the, he was in the air force. Actually, he went to the air force Academy and he had just, he had graduated and was getting his master's and I graduated and, um, then he finished school. We got married and hopped in a car, drove across the country and he started pilot training. So yeah, this is all, this has been our life wow. <laughs> this a, entire time. So he's a pilot and yes. does he fly jets? Does he fly transports? Like, yes. Well, he fly, he flew, uh, F-15 fighters, um, for, uh, for the first p- portion of his career. And then he went over into the instructor pilot training side of of the house. So then he was flying the T-38s, which is the fighter trainers. Um, so he did that. And now he's currently flying a desk. So <laughs> hey, the closest I can come to um, understanding what you're saying is that I am excited for the new Top Gun movie to come out. <laughs> oh, am I? So I am so excited. It's so cheesy and so unreal, but I'm so excited. <laughs> I, I don't like giving Tom Cruise money, but it has to be done. Because it does in this case, yeah, I do. Really I do does. agree with you. <laughs> if you grew up in the 80s, it does. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, my last question about your life is if I asked you to rattle off all the places you've lived, do you think you could actually hit them all? I could. Go ahead. I could. Okay. So, started off in Columbus, Mississippi, and then we went to Tyndall, Florida. We went to United Kingdom, England, uh, back to Florida. Then we went to Wichita Falls, Texas, then to Leavenworth, Kansas, then to Ramstein, Germany, um, back to Texas and San Antonio, then to Washington, D.C., then to another base in England, and then to Belgium, Brussels, Belgium, and then Wichita Falls, and then he deployed for a year, so I stayed in Wichita Falls, and then now we're in Ohio. Your favorite place overseas to live was? Oh, that's a hard one. They they all have, you know, with different stages of life too. factors mm. in there. You know, when you're, you know, young, no kids, that's, that's a different yeah. fun place to do Europe. Um, but Belgium, Belgium was interesting. It was very, um, very easy to travel from Belgium. So uh, we were also there during the, the, the Belgian terrorist attacks. So that part wasn't very fun, mm. but um, the food was great. The people are fun. 
But towards the end, it, we were ready to come back to the States. <laughs> <laughs> that was a juxtaposition I didn't expect. The, uh, <laughs> the terrorist attacks were terrible, but the food was outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> what a you review. Gotta, gotta look at the positives, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, you see that on Yelp, you don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how about in the States? Where did you enjoy living the best? Um, our family is from Texas originally, so I always kind of like uh I've I've liked that our our career has been able to send us there a few times. Mm. Um, I loved Florida also. I, I, I joke that, you know, we've always lived either in Europe or in the South. So like, this is actually the most Northern in the States I've ever lived. And yeah. so I'm a little concerned, like I'm going to get concerned about the, the weather, yeah. the winter, but, um, but we haven't, we haven't been here too long. So I haven't really explored a lot yet, but so far people are nice and it's gorgeous. We've had gorgeous weather since we've been here. So, cool. hey. well, we could have done this live a couple of days ago. I drove to Kentucky. I went right through Ohio. So oh, wow. uh, we could have done it at a rest stop. <laughs> Would have been way creepy. Uh, never the, uh, hi, Janet. You just sit over there. We'll do this at a, we'll do this at a Chick-fil-A. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, how old are your two kids? So you're, you have a non-type one. Is that your oldest? Yes. Yes. My daughter is 20 and then my son is now 18. 18. And he's, he's, this is pretty much why you've come on today is to talk about this whole thing. So he was diagnosed about a year ago um, yes. while he was in high school. My first question of course is, do you have any type one in the family or other autoimmune issues? Nope. It was uh, totally out of the blue. Okay. Um, even looking back now, thyroid, a sleepy aunt, um, mm -hmm. nothing like that. Nothing. No crazy. Okay. Um, what, how did it present? Okay. Uh, let's see. We had just started, he had just started back to school to, um, our being from North Texas, we didn't really lock down as a lot as, as bad as a lot of the other country of uh, the country did. Um, so he was right out about a week in school, week or two in school. And he was just, he was just off. Um, you know, of course now all I know the symptoms he had completely, um, you know, classic symptoms. Um, I just didn't, didn't know what they were. Uh, but he was just off and he was, you know, he had started wearing my reader glasses, which he had just had his physical and was, you know, 2020, uh, vision, but then he's, I saw, saw him like kind of stealing my readers so that he could look at things. And that was weird. And, um, and the thirst and the waking up at night. And then one Sunday, um, we were at church and he was just like, mom, do you got any water? And I'm like, dude, it's an hour. You can wait until we get home, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And we get home and he drinks like a gallon of water and then he goes into work. And then he came home from work and was just laid out on the couch, just, it's just, he wasn't being himself. And so I'm like, you know, darn it. We've been able to escape COVID, but I bet that's what it is. Cause I had no idea. So we go to the urgent care clinic, it being a Sunday and they, uh, they gave him a COVID test and they gave him a strep test and a flu test. And, and then there must've been something that he said, um, that kind of, you know, prickled the, the nurse. And so she's like, hold on a second. So she went back and she, she took some blood and then she left the room and then she came back in and just looked me dead in the face and said, you need to go to the emergency room now. And I, I had no words. I didn't know what to say. And I'm like, okay. Uh, okay. And she's like, just go now I'm going to call them and they're going to be waiting on you, but no explanation whatsoever. So we get to the emergency room, they're waiting on us, uh, COVID and all, you know, we're all masked up, but they wish us back in and they had him hooked up to an IV very quickly. And the next thing I know, there's, you know, they were saying he's a diabetic and I think his numbers were, um, oh no, I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button on my watch. What? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to silence it. Okay, sorry. Janet, sorry that, that that was the opposite of silence. You, oh, yes, you hit the was. loud button. <laughs> Go ahead. So, yeah, so uh, his numbers were in the 800s at that time. I had no idea what that meant. Um, and, you know, it, it was just it was just this whirlwind of activity and they're like, "Okay, we need to admit him." And um 
you know, but he was he was acting fine, even though his he was in the 800s. He was still kind of like cracking jokes and like, what's going on kind of thing. And yeah. um, which come to find out his peptides were normal, like his pancreas is still alive and kicking. Um, he's, you know, I guess still way, I mean, he's still in the honeymoon. So, um, so that, that was a weird thing that they had to kind of figure out with the actual diagnosis because the, all the signs for type one were there, but there were still signs that his pancreas was alive. So, um, there was that. And then they got us admitted and this is, I, I guess, looking back on it now, it's funny at the time I was really mad, but, um, I hadn't, you know, my husband's deployed, of course, this things like this happen when your husband's deployed. And, um, so I hadn't been able to get in touch with him. Um, we're on the elevator on the way up to, to be admitted into the room and my phone starts blowing up. So I'm like, bzz, bzz, you know, all these, you know, like either Instagram or text or are you okay? Oh my gosh. What are you, uh, let me know if I can help. What do I do? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, I haven't spoken to a single person. And so I turn around and I look at Leo and I'm like, what did you do? Well, he had gone and posted on Instagram already <laughs> that he, the world. <laughs> you're, you know, here I am in, in the hospital, I've got diabetes, you know, kind of thing. And so all of his friends who I'm friends with their parents were just blowing up my phone and I haven't even told his dad yet. So yeah. that was, a, I was a little upset about that part, but. <laughs> well, that's a look into kids. He's like, I could probably get followers out of this. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I get myself up to 500 or a thousand even. Uh, <laughs> Janet, I'm going to do something with you very quickly before we go on. You have an Apple computer, I'm guessing, from the sounds I'm hearing. Yes. The top Can you tell me how to turn that off? Top left of your screen, you click on the Apple. Then we're going okay. to go, then we're going to go to system preferences. Okay. Then we're going to go to sound. And then okay. there's a sound effects tab. You should be on it already. Halfway down the the dialog box, it says play sound effects through, and then there's a slider alert volume slider underneath. If it slide it all the way to the left, make it zero. Um, internal speakers. Okay. Did you say something else? Sound effects. Got sound it. effects. Okay. Yep. And then there's alert volume yep. all the way to the left. Yep. And then you just leave that window open somewhere so you don't forget to slide it back and, and then okay. you can quit it when we're finished. And that way your emails and other stuff won't pop through. When Perfect. Thank you for that. Cause I was actually concerned about that. Don't worry. Listen, didn't... anyone else listening who wants to be on the show, you have an Apple computer, just do that before you get on. And uh, okay, I'll there never we go. have to say it again. It'll be perfect. <laughs> now here's the thing that I know from your note that people listening don't know is that your son wants to be a pilot like your husband. Yes. Ah, and this makes that not a thing anymore. For the most part, um, I tell you the, uh, the, the minute that I heard the term diabetes, I knew in the back of my head that that was almost an, a, a negative percentage chance. Um, but I didn't know how to tell him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that, that, that actually is the, the one part that makes me the most emotional. Um, excuse me. You know, we're sitting, it was, I think we're on day, he was in the hospital for five days and I think it was on day three and I'm just still haven't gotten up the guts to tell him this. And I, I just remember the doc walks in and, and he's like, you know, going over the stuff. How are you doing? Are you learning right? And blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, well, you can do anything in the world you want to do. You know, you just take, keep this in control. You're fine. You're going to be good. So what do you want to do when you grow up? And I just froze because I had been trying to think of a way to bring this up. And there it was yeah. laid out right in front of us, you know. And so Leo just looks at him. He's like, I'm going to join the Air Force. I'm going to be a pilot like my dad. And the doc goes, accept that. <laughs> wow. What a bedside manner. Whoa. <laughs> and I, and I, I was, I was like, I was like watching a train wreck, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there like, no, this is not happening. This is not happening. And there, there you go. There it happened. And, uh, and that, that was what really shattered my heart was seeing, you know, his face just fell. He had, he had, he's got, he's got such a quirky fun sense of humor and he's, so he's cracking jokes and already joking about, you know, Oh, I got to do this. So I don't die, you know, saying all his funny things. And he, I was really impressed with him. He'd had such a great attitude about the whole thing. And then 
all of a sudden his just veneer just cracked. Mm. And um, so, you know, we've had a lot of heartfelt conversations about it. Um, He's currently um, he's, he's, uh, in the college of engineering and he, you know, basically we were kind of like, well, if you can't, can't fly the planes, well, why not design them or do things with them kind of thing. So, however, just a few months ago, um, the air force Academy graduated its first, um, type one diabetic, uh, cadet. Really? He fought it and he brought, he, you know, cause he was diagnosed while he was at the Academy and it was um, basically they medically retire you. They make you get out. And he fought it and he actually won. He presented all his his numbers and his things. And he's like, look, I might not be able to deploy, but I can do things. And he actually they commissioned him just three months ago. So, That's you know, I sent I sent that article to, to, to my son and I was like, Hey dude, you know, look at this. It might be an uphill battle, but someone just cracked a window. You might want to consider, you know, yeah, try charging to, through. trying to wiggle through a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, that is really sad. Also the doctor seems like the kind of guy who would break up with you by going, uh, if you're dating a doctor, raise your hand. And then when you start putting up <laughs> your hand goes, Nope, not so fast. Uh, I mean, <laughs> what, what a, May I say, Janet, you and I don't know each other well, but that's a douchey move, uh, the way he did that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 it was probably a, uh, he was, he actually was a nice guy. I think it was probably just a reaction of, oh, can't do that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't think he expected to hear, you don't, hear no, my son you say don't that, normally so. ans- ask a question that has, uh, infinite positive answers and one wrong answer <laughs> you think oh i'm safe here you know what I mean? it's like when you make a joke about somebody's uh i don't know about something really uncomfortable in some in front of somebody and somebody's like oh that that's i have that and you're like oh geez sorry like I, that seems safe you know um <laughs> this this guy uh your your kid I, i'm assuming in that little gap of time you're like maybe he changed his mind is there any way he's thinking of something else now i hope he says <laughs> I hope he says truck driver, uh, you know, which by the way, was an uphill battle for a long time and now. Okay. Yeah. So used to not be able to drive over the road trucks when you had type one either. So. Yeah. And I've heard also like the SWAT teams. Now you can be on a SWAT team and now you can do airliners. You can fly airliners yep. now. So the technology is absolutely amazing. And so, I, so hopefully, Hey, yeah. Hey dude. This ha- is what you want to do. Don't give up yet. I'm trying to think of his name, but I had the guy on here who got like the first li- license to to fly to fly the jetliners. He, um, I can't think of his name. I'll I'll, f- I'll figure it out. And I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, I, I remember listening to that one. Yeah, I think not the uh, same thing though. You shouldn't want to do it through the military, right? So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, geez. So that's an inauspicious start to this whole thing. How did the the um the medical side of it go has he taken to that reasonably well and how about you what did you guys do for management yeah he has um i will say that um i've heard you know time and time again on your show about certain doctors not really knowing kind of the thing of of how to what even type 1 is and i there was a huge stark difference between the er doctor and the actual pediatric doctor cuz leo was still 17 at the time while we were in the hospital um, the ER doctor was basically like, well, you've got yourself a diabetic. That means you can no longer eat A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know, you're going to have to really uh, change your entire lifestyle. You're going to have to do everything. And so we're listening to this like going, OK, this is a huge life change. Well, it is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the doctor was already was focused on the the food he can no longer eat anymore. You know, that's basically the first kind of advice we got in the ER. Um, once we got up to the peed floor and the nurses were talking with us and those doctors were coming in and seeing us, they seemed to be a lot more knowledgeable Mm -hmm. about it. And I think, I think they did a good job. You know, we were there, uh, five days. Um, they, they had him, you know, from the get go, I was hands off. I'm like, dude, you're 17. I I'm not going to learn how to give you a shot. You need to do this. And so he took to it right away. And, in the hospital, it was all vials and syringes. And um, all I can remember thinking is that for the rest of my life, I'm going to have to be doing math before he eats anything. You know, everything was just for you have to measure this and, and math and and how many carbs and all the things. Um, but then when we got home, 
uh, they, he went home with pins. Um, he had the Nova log pins and Lantus and, um, he did, he did great from the beginning. He was kind of really on top of it. I was now I'm the one that, you know, cooked the food and managed all the things. So I was like, I had sticky notes every time I would make a meal, I would write out exactly how many carbs was in everything. And I was very, very, um, anal about it. I was just like, Oh no, is this a, is this a medium orange or is this a large orange? You know, I was so crazy. And then eventually, I don't know. I just kept getting frustrated with Leo. Like you need to know exactly how many carbs are in this. And he's like, eh, it looks like about 15, you know, kind of thing. So he was much more laid back about everything than I was. I, I keep, I, I joke that, you know, I'm like, when Harry met Sally, Sally, mm. that is me. And he's like laid back, dazed and confused, Matthew McConaughey, you know, it's just like, oh, that's, it'll be all right. Look, look at that. It's, it's good. It looks, uh, you know, I'll give myself 45. And, and if I need a bump up, I will kind of thing. So he's kind of really taken to it a lot more, um, just easy, an easier approach to it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, really this kind of, segues a little bit until and into how I found your podcast because uh you know I guess when you're when your kid gets diagnosed with with anything really people start coming out of the woodwork of oh that happened to me or oh my best friend's son has it or whatever so all of a sudden I found all these people who knew about type one that I didn't know before you know they out of the woodwork. And, um, and your uh, this one lady said, you need to listen to the juice pucks podcast. It'll help you out a lot. And I'm like, I hear the word podcast. And I was like, I don't do podcasts. I, I've never listened to one in my life. Um, I'm not a auditory person. I'd rather read it or watch it mm-hmm. than just listen to it, if that makes sense. And so um, I was like, I kind of blew it off. And then um, I heard it again from, from another random person who someone had given me her number. And so I called and I'm like, Hey, uh, you know, such and such hooked us up. They said, you have a kid in college. What's he one D can I ask you some questions? Sure. Da, 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 da. And right before we got off the phone, she's like, listen to the juice box podcast. And again, I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that because I don't do that. Janet, Janet, you didn't think what are the odds of two people <laughs> recommending a podcast to me? <laughs> Right. Well, well, apparently I did because Eventually. what did I do? I'm like, <laughs> so I, um, I, I walk a lot and, um, just to, you know, get outside and when walk and, and kind of when my husband was deployed for the year, that was kind of like my coping mechanism. I would just, um, just walk and, and just, you know, go on trails or whatever. And so I'm like, okay, I'll try this podcast thing. And so I searched you up and I listened And I listened to, like, I was kind of lost because I think when I started, you had like 400 episodes already. So I was like, I have no idea where to even start with this. And then um, I I don't know if I Googled it or I did something or maybe I I think I went to your your website. I looked at your website first, the Arden's Day. Mm -hmm. And um, there was something on there of that, that it's like the blue box that has like the top episodes to get started with yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I saw that. I found that. And, um, I'm like, okay, well I'll just follow this little list. And so that's what I did. And then I was pretty much hooked. Um, and I, I haven't listened to every episode. Um, but I've listened to a lot of them. I would scroll through and try to pick, pick the titles <laughs> that sounded interesting, but then you can't go by that because I put no effort into that. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what this one's going to be about. So you- um, so I will say that your podcast really helped me relax. Oh, good. Um, it helped me realize that it was, it was manageable and here's the tools to how to do it. Um, you know, so I, I found it relatively quickly. And in fact, I started listening to you before we went to our first diabetes educator person. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm glad because. Uh, I, I felt like the information was presented to me in a way that I could get it. 
Whereas before everything was just very clinical and numbers and you have to do this math and then enter in this code and blah, blah, blah. Whereas now it was like, okay, now I kind of knew what was going on. I knew what was happening, if that makes sense. Well, not only does that make me feel good, but you've, you've saved my week because today is Thursday as we record. And on Tuesday, I heard a story about how somebody found the podcast. And then she told me she didn't really like me very much. And I was like, Oh, this is fun for me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Explain why you don't like me. And then she did. And, um, and then she ended up liking me. And I was like, Okay, thank you. So I told her um, that I just think you need to be straightforward about this stuff. And that you need to feel like the person you're listening to understands. And then, and that sort of has to do with like, you have to speak with an authoritative confidence, you know, like I, either I understand this or I don't, if I don't understand it, then I'm here to commiserate with you, which is not going to help you, you know, beyond that commiseration. Um, but if you, I don't know, I just, I know how to do this. I, I don't think that that's a bad thing to say out loud. You, you know what I mean? And I feel confident about it uh, among you know, most of the decisions that need to be made. So anyway, I'm glad because I was scared, Janet. Church, you said church, you said Texas a couple of times. And I was like, she's not going to have liked me when she got to this podcast. I was like, I'm all <laughs> beat up now. I'm not, like, now I got my hands up. I'm waiting to get hit in the face. But I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. And I'm glad you listened to those people. And thank you to them. Um, yeah. Seriously, I, I tell people all the time, the podcast grows because people share it. Like, I don't, I don't pay for, I, I couldn't afford to, and I don't have marketing. Marketing a podcast is not the way to make it grow to begin with. It's word of mouth. And so if people don't take the time to tell someone else, it just kind of languishes. But instead, uh, today's September 30th, and this was the most downloaded month in the history of the podcast. This month had more downloads by almost 100% than did 2018. Wow. And it almost this month almost had as many downloads as 2019 in total. That's crazy. Yeah, it, I feel it's crazy too. It 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 shocks me every time I see it. Gvoke Hypopen has no visible needle and is the first pre-mixed auto injector of glucagon for very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes ages two and above. Not only is Gvoke Hypopen simple to administer, but it's simple to learn more about. All you have to do is go to gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Gvoke shouldn't be used in patients with insulinoma or pheochromocytoma. Visit gvokeglucagon.com slash risk. Later today, head over to touchedbytype1.org. Check out their programs tab to learn more about what they do. Everything from their annual conference to their awareness campaigns, their Dancing for Diabetes programs, those D-boxes, and the new Golfing for Diabetes event that's coming up very soon. Touchedbytype1.org. So there we are. We're friends now. I'm your walking hey. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk to me while you're walking, do you? I, I'm not walking. <laughs> oh, no, I, no right I, mean, I mean generally when you're walking and listening, you don't speak out loud to me, do you? Uh, typically not, no. Okay, but is it happening? I, I, I giggle a lot because that's why I think we would have been friends in high school because you'll movie quote or you'll say, you know, reference some movies and I'm like, yeah, we're totally in the same time frame. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. I always just imagine younger people are like, they just bear down and think they said my A1C will get better. I'm just going to make it through this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, that's really cool. But does it translate to your son? Because he's managing himself mainly. And oddly enough, he is sort of has my vibe, right? He's sort of like, just use more or something like that. Um, yeah. So, but how do you get the information you're finding to him and how much pressure do you feel to do that before he leaves for college? Yeah. Um, he, at the first, at the onset, once I started listening to you, he was pretty open, um, to, oh, Hey, listen, I learned today, you know, and I couldn't get him to actually listen to the podcast. Now on a couple of occasions, if I had him trapped in the car, mm -hmm. I would, I would put, I'm like, okay, hear me out. Let's just listen to one kind of thing. And, um, but where I knew 
that it was getting through to him. Cause you know, a lot of times I would just get the grunts back like, uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Kind of, kind of things. Yeah. But when I knew what I was saying was actually seeping in was actually at our first, uh, the diabetic counselor session, um, when she made a comment about, you know, let's look at our numbers, let's look at the range. And before I could say anything, he said, I don't want to go over 120 or I want to set it at 120. And I'm like, oh my God, he was listening to me. <laughs> he actually, <laughs> he actually listened to something I said. And then um, so he might, you know, fight me a little bit on it on the on the surface, but ultimately he he definitely buys in to to this philosophy. And I've heard him mention before things like. Well, I'd really rather, you know, catch a low than battle a high um, and that sort of thing. So, you know, now that I'm not nagging him all the time and he's in a completely different state, I I feel more comfortable that he gets it. Now, does he have all the fine tunings down? Like, you know, I was listening to your podcast. It aired, I think, last week, maybe with the doctor. Was it Adi? Dr. Yeah. Sala Adi? Yeah. He was really good, wasn't he? Oh, he was fantastic. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, this is the kind, especially that last half when he was talking about the basil and, and everything. I'm like, this is what I need Leo to listen to because he that's the kind of stuff. He still, I think, plays a little fast and loose sometimes when he's just like, oh, I'll I'll just throw more at it later or whatever. So that's, that's kind of like the more fine tuning that I really want him to, to get to so that he doesn't fluctuate as much as he does sometimes, especially, and that's actually one of the questions that I had come on to me during that Dr. Adi's um, podcast um, was he was talking about getting it straight throughout the night, Mm -hmm. the basal rate straight throughout the night. That way you kind of reasonably know that you've got it right. And, and my thought process was, yeah, but he's in college staying up till 3 a.m. eating pizza, you know, I, <laughs> so then you, just go I, to, I, you just go to whatever his sleeping time is. Like the idea is that, oh, oh, first of all, I have to tell you that when he said that I was so proud of myself because I came up with that thought by myself without talking to anybody else. And this guy seemed brilliant. And anything he said that I agreed with, I was like, oh, it made me feel very good uh, anyway. And. <laughs> But yeah, so you just want like away from bolus or active insulin. How does he sit stable? And the nighttime ends up being the easiest because, you know, you imagine you'll stop eating at some point before you go to sleep. And maybe you can even watch it from like 2 a.m. to whatever. You know, um, uh, your son shouldn't be growing too much anymore, right? So um, whatever works in that space is kind of a good jumping off point for other times a day. I think is the idea, but I hear what you're saying. He's probably up till two in the morning. Do, is yeah. he a freshman? Yeah, he's a freshman. Yeah, they don't they don't go to school even barely. They just you know. <laughs> <laughs> you're just, you're just, he's actually. I'm really proud of this kid. He's actually. Good? He called me in a panic like three weeks ago because he overslept for a class and was late. And I'm like, well, the fact that you're panicked about that makes me feel good. <laughs> Janet, I'm <laughs> you know? gonna. I'm going to crap on your parade here for a second. I got that exact same phone call when Cole was a freshman. Um, I just woke up. I overslept. I'm really sorry. Uh, the, the class is 10 minutes into it. I don't know what to do. And I was like, is there time for you to get to the class? And he goes, yeah. I said, walk in. And when he makes eye contact with you, go, I'm sorry. And then sit down or mm-hmm. excuse me. I was like, it's not a big deal. I was like, it's okay. And then uh, a couple of days ago, Cole FaceTimed me to say he wasn't feeling well. The you know, the entire campus got sick when, of course, they were all reintroduced to each other after a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, so they all have the same kind of sniffly head cold. And he's like, I didn't feel good. Uh, he's like, so I didn't go to class yesterday. And I was like, oh, I don't hear the same panic in your voice Uh-oh. as I, I did when you were, <laughs> when you were a freshman. Uh, he's like, I, I can make it up. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks. All of my money, Janet. <laughs> Every every dollar I make off an ad from this thing is just over at that college. And he's like, I didn't go today. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, oh. you know, rest up, buddy. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're nice and fresh, don't worry. I'll just keep working. 
<laughs> no, but seriously, I, I was very proud of my son that day too, when he made that same phone call. I was like, wow, this is like, you know, either this means something to him or at least he has respect for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So exactly. So, no, but, but he's, he's really doing, he's really doing good. I, I think I'm probably struggling the most because I don't have that. You know, I was making all his, his lunches and his food and I was in control of all that. And now I'm not in control of any of it, you know? And mm-hmm. so it's, it's, that's the part that gets me the most. And, um, he, he's on Dexcom, but the past four days, actually, while we were talking, it just shot back on, um, for the past four days, he had, he hadn't basically called for a few replacement ones that he needed uh, they had like either had malfunctioned or whatever. And so he ran out of them. And so he had like one left until he could get his new prescription and he was just going to wait, hold off a few days before putting it on. And I was like, are you okay to finger sticking again for a few days? And he's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You know, but me, I'm like checking my phone twice a day, hoping it <laughs> goes back on. He put the darn Dexcom back on. And sure enough, it just right as we were talking, I got a high glucose notification. So apparently it's back on. Wow. Well. That's good that he put it back on. Um, do you yeah. think he? Do you think he was just looking to be autonomous for a couple of days? I don't know. I, he. I think that's that's a possibility. Yeah. That's a possibility of him um, just kind of taking a break from mom in his blood sugar <laughs> kind of well, thing. So y- you did indicate earlier that you're tracking him. I'm assuming through Find My iPhone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we have the Live 360. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Whichever one you're using. So find my iPhone works when we get the low notification in the middle of the night. Um, we have had to call him a couple times. And and if he doesn't um, answer his phone, you send that then down. we ping him on find my iPhone and that always wakes him up. <laughs> yeah. I've done that to Arden while she's in school. And then I get a text back. What are you doing? That's so loud. I'm like, you should have answered me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear it. I'm like, well. Oh, you heard that. So we're all good now. Don't worry about it. Stop yelling at me and bull us. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done that in a while, of course, because, you know, COVID. Um, uh, well, is his plan? I mean, it's such an unfair question because he's a freshman and I, the, my son's a senior and I, I don't, he's got a degree and a, or he's going to have a degree and a minor. And I don't, I still don't think he has, if I asked him what he wanted to do for a living, I don't know that he would have any answer for that. So, but is your son shifting his focus or is he going to put his head down and try to run through that glass ceiling or what's he doing there? You know, I don't know. And I don't know if he knows quite yet. Um, I think that, uh, I think what he's probably going to do is finish out college and then pursue, um, if he chooses to try, then try for, uh, OTS officer training school and, um, go through that way. Um, I think, I don't think he's going to try and join an ROTC program or anything, but you know, I, I'm wondering if this is just where he needs to be. Um, you know, he's always, my husband has always been very military and very short hair and, you know, just fine in the uniform. Whereas Leo has always been more of a, of a freer spirit, you know, he's got a beard and he's got, um, he's not clean cut, um, you know, and he's, he's more of his just express myself wearing, you know, taco cat t-shirts or whatever. And, um, so I never really saw him want to be in the military as far as he'd have to shave and (laughs) he'd have to follow these rules. And he's always kind of, you know, he's a good kid. He, he follows the rules for the most part, but he makes his own way. He definitely has his own way of doing things and they work for him. And so I don't know if this is maybe something that's um, more that that he'll jive more to on this end, maybe still working with military, but not actually in the uniform kind of thing. Um, Or he could choose to, hey, let's I do want to continue to pursue um, being a pilot. So. Yeah, I, would I really guess. don't know. I think he's I think he's just kind of feeling it out right now. That's perfect. I would guess, too, even if he felt like maybe even if he just felt like a little pressure, like this is what we do, maybe that releases him from that even. You know, Possibly. What I mean? you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm sure it'll be terrific. He sounds like a great person. So I'm I'm sure it'll be 
good. You agree with me about a lot of stuff. So that makes me like you. And then that makes me feel good about your kid. So <laughs> <All good. laughs> I'll see how easy it is to win me over. Uh, <laughs> just agree. That's all. Um, That's so, Go with it. <laughs> so you put all this effort into understanding diabetes and then the diabetes left. Did you right. feel more abandoned by the your kid going to college or that task being taken from you? I don't know. Cause I still, I still listen to your podcast, even though I know I've heard you say before that there's like a six month <laughs> limit almost when people feel like, okay, I got it. And then they might kind of go, you know, once they feel comfortable, but I haven't, I'm not there yet. I still want to, to learn and, and, and find things, you know, listen to more stories. And I love it when you have the doctors on and, um, the Dexcom CEO guys, I love those. Those are my favorite because I just feel like that's some, at least some more information I can pass along to Leo. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can't kind of mess with his day-to-day stuff anymore because he's proven to me that he's still alive after a month of college and I'm not there. So he's proven to me that he can, he can do this. Um, I think, uh, but when I hear from like the doctors or, or, or that kind of stuff, and I have like a nugget of, Hey, guess what's coming down the pike, you know? Yeah. And yeah. he's more receptive to listening to that information from me than he is me saying, Hey, have you pre-bought us lately? You right. know, kind of thing. So, um, so there's that. And, um, and another thing that I keep kind of harping on him a little bit is because he's in this extended honeymoon, I mean, he, if he goes above 200, I freak out because he very rarely, if he goes above 200, it, he just like spikes up there and goes right back down. We have never battled the 300s, 400s, 500s that I hear described on your show. Oh. Uh, we've never been there once we got out of the initial hospital visit. Cause he was in the 800s at that time. But, but since then we battle lows, we battle lows all the time because it's like, he's, he's doing okay, doing okay in range in range. And then his pancreas wakes up and decides to spit some insulin out and then he dips. So I've always been more fearful of the lows. I've never really been worried about the highs at all because we just haven't battled them, mm, but yeah. I know eventually they're coming. And so that's kind of my little thing with him is that, okay, remember what you're doing now won't always be the case. You know, it won't always be the case that a pen will last you over a month and you have to throw it away before, because it's, it's expired, not because you finished it, you know, because his insulin needs are still really low. So he's going to, somebody's going to steal those training wheels off his bike in the middle of the night and Right. Gonna, and that's, that's my shock. fear yeah. is that he's resting on his laurels. Cause he's got this, I got this mom, I got this. Well, eventually they're gonna, they're gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna change. Have you, so. have you done a good job? You think of explaining to him that this is just the beginning and that he's getting help from the pancreas still. Yeah, he knows he, um, he, he's pretty, he's pretty aware of all of it. And, um, he, he kind of knows the, the biology of it about, how his, you know, the beta cells and all that, he kind of, he gets it. So, and he knows that eventually like randomly, if he has been kind of trending high a little bit and I'll tell him, I was like, well, do you need to maybe increase your basal a little bit or maybe increase your carb ratio? Um, he'll, he's made comments of, I wonder, is this it? Is this it? Is my pancreas finally going to go kaput now? Is this it? But then he'll make some adjustments and it goes kind of back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. So he's aware of it. Well, that's, I mean, all you can ask for, it's going to be a shock. Listen, I mean, I've seen people over and over again, they get knocked over by it at first because it's a big adjustment. It doesn't, you don't expect the adjustment that's coming. Even if you're, even if you're expecting an end to a honeymoon, you don't expect it to be so drastic. Get, you yeah. know, um, I know for parents of little kids, it's hard for them to go from like 0.15 an hour to 0.4. They feel like it's like all the insulin in the world. Um, and for an adult, how big is your son? He's a, he's a big kid, um, about 180, 190. Um, he was a wrestler. He I mean, he's just a he's just a very big kid. Big, strong kid. Yeah, he's going to need some insulin at some point. And it, it yeah. the amount is it. it 
if you can stop yourself by being shocked by the number and just meet the need, it's much easier. And maybe he'll be okay with that. Maybe he's not going to be put off by the number. Um, you know, and he'll just be able to adjust. Uh, and maybe it'll happen during a break. That would be nice. Or a summer when he's home. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you could crawl back up his butt and take care of it. <laughs> um, I, uh, I uh, cried uh, pretty extensively when I dropped my son off at college. And mm -hmm. I'm preparing to just martyr myself when Arden leaves. I'm just going <laughs> to... It's going to climb to the top of a hill and, and wail yeah. until people come and stone me to death. Uh, because yeah. yeah, that was that was a rough drive. And not only were we. Oh, there he goes. All right. That was a rough, um, rough drive because I wasn't we weren't dropping him off at Texas. I felt like he, we were leaving him. We were abandoning my child <laughs> in Texas and driving to Ohio. That was like a. That was tough. That was a really, I mean, with my daughter dropping her off, it was hard too. Of course, she was our first, but we lived five hours away at the time. And, you know, now I have to jump on an airplane to go down there. And so, oof, yeah, it was, it was a rough, rough drive walking away, you know, and. Do you think you had a little of the mother and son thing too? Oh yeah. yeah. I think so. I can't tell what that is. I don't know what dastardly mm -hmm like wiring is in a mother, but, um, I mean, I, at first I thought it was cause Cole was older and mm -hmm. then I don't even know what it is. Like, I couldn't tell you like Kelly loves Arden completely, but I mean, I feel like she'd pause before murdering you if you came after Arden. But if you came after, <laughs> like, at least she'd be like, it's going to be wrong to murder this person, but I have to, because they're going after my daughter. But if you came after my son, I don't even think there's a mechanism in her brain to make her think. And I don't even, I can't understand what that is, but it seems yeah. pretty real to me. So. Yeah. You know, and I, because mine are flipped because my daughter is my older one. Um, just for us, my daughter and I are very similar. We're similar personalities. Um, we think alike, uh, because of that, we can butt heads, you know? Um, but also she just, she always just, she was ready. She, she was ready to go. I saw that she was ready. It was hard. I cried many tears, but she was there. She was, she was it. She was doing it, mm -hmm. you know, with Leo. Um, yes, he's always been my baby, of course, cause he was the second born, but I think it was doubly hard because the, the whole last year, you know, my daughter was away at college. Um, my husband was uh, deployed and it was just Leo and I, it, we were like roommates. We, you know, it, yeah. we kind of developed this and then diabetes hit. So we also had that to work through together. So we really developed a, a very tighter bond this last year. And in the fact that that, I think that added to it as well of not only is he my boy and my baby, but now I have to leave him and abandon him in this place far away from me where I can't keep him alive. Was your husband in a war zone? Yes. He was. And and and, and oddly he might have gotten the uh he might have gotten the happier end of the stick. Uh, <laughs> while you're trying to figure out diabetes. I'm assuming yeah. I'm assuming that you had at least one phone call where you told him how hard this was and he said I'm I'm flying a jet in a war. And uh, uh -huh. well <laughs> He wasn't flying. It was a, um, oh, it desk. wasn't a flying job, but, um, <laughs> but you know, I actually felt sorry for him because he, you know, as much as out of control as I feel like right now with Leo being so far away from me, he, my husband had struggled a lot with being away during this, that time. I, would imagine. I mean, he really couldn't do anything to help and, um, he could listen to me, but he hadn't been able to immerse himself in the whole diabetic vocabulary. So he was barely hanging on to what I was trying to tell him. And then he in turn didn't know how to help me, um, you know, outside of just letting me cry and telling me he loves me and that it's going to be okay, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he really felt it was just awful for, for him. He felt like he was so far away and he couldn't help us work through this. And, you know, when, um, I think it really first hit home when he, when he was home and we were actually in the middle of our move from Texas to Ohio. And he was, uh, um, 
uh, Leo's uh, low alarm, urgent low came across in the middle of the night, you know? And, and so I'm like up like a shot and, and Russ is grabbing the, the phone and trying to, you know, figure out, you know, let's call him. He's not answering his phone. And, and then, you know, it turned out to be a compression low. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, he wakes up, he's like, Oh yeah, I'm all good. It's fine. I'm going back to bed. Right. And then, you know, but we're still awake after Leo goes back to bed and, and, you know, he just looked at me and he was just like, I'm so sorry you had to do this by yourself. I'm so sorry, you know, cause he was just now starting to experience what I had experienced for the whole year. Sure. And it was really hard on him. It was really, it was really hard on him to, to, to deal with that because, you know, he's, he's my rock and all of a sudden my rock is in Iraq. Uh huh. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> I'm so are confused. you trying to name the episode? <laughs> oh gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm very lazy about this, and I will obviously just go with that if <laughs> oh, if it needs to be. Well, no, I, I can't. Um, I can't agree with you more. Honestly, the, that that helpless feeling exists when you're there, but but putting that kind of distance between it, um, I can't imagine how that must ratchet it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and vice versa too, right? Like now you're aware that he feels bad. He's aware that you're struggling. Neither of you can help each other. He can't even learn about diabetes. And then he understands, too, that time's going to tick away. And before you know it, your son's going to be off at college. And he might never have that that connection of understanding with him, you know. And and probably he had to listen to you talk about some guy on a podcast over a, a scratchy phone call, which I'm <laughs> assuming was really irritating. <laughs> so I I get notes from guys sometimes that are like, you know, I can't take your my wife telling me about you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> i guess that's a good problem to have though yeah. right well for me not for them they're it's, <laughs> it's irritating for them um you know so and i just you know being overseas like that i don't know i have no context for that obviously um uh, but it sounds just extra difficult it really does mm. uh but he's it um but it sounds like leo's doing well it sounds like he's aware of what may or may not happen um are you concerned about drinking? Do you think he's going to drink? He's actually, um, he's got a much better head on his shoulders than I do sometimes about that kind of stuff. He's really good with self-control. Um, you know, us actually us living in Belgium, the drinking age was 16. And so, you know, he's had a, he's had a beer. Uh, he's, you know, we've, it's, we've never, um, we've never been a never, never, never. We've always been a, you need to do this. If you're going to do this, you're going to be responsible. You have to be responsible and you have to know how things affect your body. And, you know, sitting on the couch is a lot different than being in a bar somewhere. So we've always just been very realistic and just know, know yourself and know who you're with and be responsible. So that's always been our mantra with that because I, I did not follow the rules when I was in college. And so I can't, I have to know in my heart of hearts that they might not either. So we've always tried to take that approach of you need to be careful always. And he is actually, he's, he's very responsible uh, with it. I, I'm not going to hold any, um, you know, imaginations that he's not ever not going to, Um, but I did have the, the diabetic counselor walk them through it. You know, like if you do choose to drink alcohol, you need to do A, B, C, and D, and you need to be very careful and you need to eat and you need to, you know, keep your alerts on and don't turn your phone off and all these kind of things. So we've talked about it, but I I definitely say of, of, of all the members of our family that could would be the most responsible in that aspect. I think he's, he's, he's it. So I gotta be honest with you. I was hoping you would say the guy flying the plane, but I understand what you're getting at. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's what the bottle of throttle rule is. (laughs) Oh, geez. That sounds like a thing. Um, do you, it is a thing. It is a thing. You can't drink a certain amount of time before you get into the, start the process of the plane, anything with the plane. So they call it bottle to throttle. Do you guys have a private plane? Like, do you and your husband go out on weekends and things like that? 
We do not, but that is on his bucket list. Oh my God, that's <laughs> going to be your retirement is him flying you places and seeing, uh, taking you for a sandwich somewhere. Yeah. Uh, cool. you'll, you'll get tired of that. Okay, that's yeah. not the point. That's the great <laughs> irony is I'm scared to fly. I, I do it, but I, I'm nervous the entire time. <laughs> how, how are you with your husband flying? Did, you, did that ever, does that bother you? Or is it something you just give away like being a cop's wife or something like that? It took a long time. It took a long time. It, it, when he was at back in pilot training, I was always a basket case. And like, I wanted him to, well, this was before cell phones really, but I wanted him to like, you know, just give me a quick call when he landed. I was a little more, you know, freaked out about it then. Now I've really, I'm, I'm, I mean, I trust him. He's a good pilot. I, I know he's going to be okay. And I just, you know, I leave it at that, but it was a journey. It took me a while to get there. And there's always little, uh, little, you know, what do they call them when you're uh, old house tales, wife tales or mm-hmm. whatever, it's superstitions, yeah. things like that, that, you know, that we never break. There are taboos that, that you don't do. Like once he steps to his jet, that's it. I don't call him. I don't text him. He doesn't call me. He doesn't text me. His brain is solely on that, his mission. That. And there, you know, fast forward. Gosh, um, it was in, a, in our in this last assignment. I was doing a tour with a group of ladies at the squadron, and as we entered into the, st- I call it the stinky room because it's where all their gear hangs, mm-hmm. and it's you know it's like a it's like a big massive locker room smell. You it's know, how my car smells when Cole's home playing baseball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And as we're walking through it, I see at the end of the room, I see him, and he's he's putting his he's getting his gear. He's he's got his G suit on. He's putting his getting his helmet all ready to go step to a jet and we lock eyes. And I like almost had a panic attack because once he steps to the jet, you're not supposed to see me or think about me. You think about the mission, you know, and it's just always been our little thing. And I spent the rest of the day freaked out. Like, oh, is something going to happen? Is, you know? I, 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 listen. And when he came home, he was like, it's okay. I'm fine. <laughs> That's when you, but, that's when you found out time. Yeah, it's easy for him to forget about you. He was like, yeah, it's fine. I won't worry. About it again. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, Oren Lieberman, I don't know if you know who that is. He's the um, Pentagon correspondent for CNN. He also has type one and he's a, mm-hmm. he's a, 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 a pilot too. And when he was on the podcast, we learned that his parents and where his plane is, is very close to my house. And he was just, I think he was being polite. He's like, I'll have to take you out one time. And I'm like, no, <laughs> was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go up in your tiny little plane that you were able to afford on your own. That seems wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's had to kind of walk me, talk me, th- talk me into it over the years. And he's, um, so I, I don't know if, you know, financially it'll ever be feasible, but he's, he wants to get his private pilot's license so that once our time in the, in the air force is, is over, that, that is, is an option open to him. So he's, he's excited about it. I would start flying jets and then just, you guys could just constantly be on vacation. You probably could sell your home. You could just like <laughs> bounce around the world for a while. That'd be fun. Um, uh, my last question for you, and then I'm going to ask you if, if there's anything we haven't talked about, but my last question for you is how, engaged in diabetes do you think you're going to be over the next handful of years with Leo? Uh, I think as long as he's open to me still being engaged, um, I can't see myself exiting that at all. Um, I think that at some point in some minor little way, he appreciates my nagging. (laughs) Or at least he appreciates me doing all the research and sharing the the nuggets with him that um, so that he doesn't have to do it himself. Um, I know I'm uh, very anxiously awaiting the uh, the new the newest Omnipod and Dexcom um, so that we can try the whole loop thing. I'm not quite comfortable enough with doing it the do it yourself stuff. I've looked into it, I've researched it, but. Um, I'm not that comfortable with it yet. I think I'd rather wait until it's prepackaged for me. Yeah, on the um, five you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I, he doesn't really, he doesn't have a stigma about the diabetes. I know um, a lot of kids do. They either hide it or don't want to be very open with it. And and he's just, he doesn't care. Mm-hmm. He's like, and he actually hates the term or. 
he doesn't prefer the term diabetic because he's like, I'm not a diabetic. I'm Leo and I happen to have diabetes kind of thing, you know? So he doesn't, he's just like, it's okay. It's just part of me. If you see my pod, fine, whatever, I don't care. Um, so he's very good about that. And so I don't think he'll ever kick me off of his Dexcom (laughs) or anything like that. Um, but I think as we progress and as he matures and grows and, um, I, my hope is that he does get a little more involved and in still continuing to learn about it yeah. because, because of the, the new things that are coming down, you know, right now it's all me saying, Oh, guess what, guess what's coming or, or that kind of thing. And I, I, I hope that one day he takes that on, but I really can't see myself really stepping out of it all the way unless he really wants me to pushes you away. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, that sounds about like how I would have answered. So I think it's great. I think I think that I'd love to talk to Leo in a couple of years after he's used the Omnipod 5 for a while. And that would be really interesting for a person who's newly diagnosed in college to start on that. It'd be it'd be, uh, be good information to have at some point. Um, yeah. So, Leo, if you're listening, just, you know, <laughs> hit me up like in a year or two. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll, I will we'll tell him to. That. I don't know. I'm still he's still. Um... I still can't get him to listen, you know, on his own. So yeah. maybe no, I'm, listen, I wouldn't if, if I don't know if I would listen to the podcast, although I have to tell you something and, and, and then I'll let you go. I know I have you over time. Um, earlier you talked that you referred to when I said people seem to have like a six month life. That was something I learned from the internet, from social media that I just assumed would translate to the podcast, but it doesn't seem that it has. So, oh, really? Yeah. So I think there's something about listening to the stories that's entertaining outside of diabetes. Um, and I have to admit that a couple of the podcasts that I listened to were on hiatus this week, and I listened to my own podcast once. And when I got done, I was like, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I was entertained by it. Like, it kept, yeah. my, it kept my attention for the hour. Um, yeah. And so I'm not seeing people drift away from the podcast the way I see them drift away from online help. Okay. Um, so that's, yeah. I, you know, that's good. I have my fingers crossed. I think that's why the, the numbers grow, uh, is because people hang around to listen to other people's stories too. Yeah, you're not losing the old ones. You're just adding new ones. We're just adding more. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I like that you're listening. There's people who listen, who don't have diabetes. Um, there's a person I always think of, uh, who listens, uh, to stay close to their kids. Um, you know, so there's, there's a, there's a lot going on here. So I, I appreciate that you found it and that your friends or your, your acquaintances. Actually, I meant to give you props earlier. You did something difficult as he was diagnosed. I don't know if you realized it or not, but people like offered you a phone number to call. Like, here, reach out to me, ask me questions. And you mm-hmm. actually did it. You have yeah. no idea how often I get a, like a note from a friend that says, I gave your cell phone number to a friend of mine and told them to reach out to you about diabetes, and they never reach out. So it's a big deal that you were, that you did that. I think I, I, yeah. I wonder. Well, I was I was floundering. I mean, I I just you know I was I just was at that point of uh, okay, this person can help me. I mean, I'd call you know the washing machine repair man if I needed my washing machine repaired. So. Yeah. I, I need some help here. And, you know, this community has been fantastic. Everyone's been very opening and non-judging and here's what I can offer you. And, um, and yeah, it's, 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 but it's really amazing how many lives type one does touch. I mean, More than it's, you, think. you don't, you don't even think about it. And then all of a sudden they're like, Oh yeah, my daughter. Oh yeah. My son or my aunt or whatever. And you've known this person forever and you never knew that. Yeah. So yeah. Now, I'm just telling you from my experience that you had the nerve or the the instinct to reach out is a big deal. A lot of people ignore that when people lend a hand, they don't sometimes take it. So that's cool. I was I was I meant to say it when you were talking about it and the conversation just kind of got past me. Also, you mentioned that Leo ran out of Dexcoms and while we were I wrote down a note for me to call and because I realized Arden only has two left. I was like, well, I have to do that too. So I appreciate that as well. Is there anything yeah. that we didn't talk about that you were hoping to? Oh, I'm sure there are, but I don't know. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, I guess that is another thing that me having to give up the control is Leo is now responsible for calling and getting his own things. And that for me is another difficult thing to let go of. 
because I'm, you know, have all my ducks in a row and, and he shouldn't run out. He should have called already. (laughs) Now he's almost running out. Well, you can have my kid if you want, who sent me a note and said, I'm out of this. (laughs) And that meant get me more, not, not not tell me how to find it. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, But now I I understand. Are you kind of type A to begin with? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I own it. (laughs) <laughs> well, you need something else to tell what to do. <laughs> Call, your Call your daughter up. Call your daughter up and 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 <laughs> fix her life. <laughs> Did you say were you getting ready to say my dogs don't listen to me? <laughs> no, my dogs don't listen to me either. So I just need to find. I need to find something. <laughs> just let it, yeah. Do you think you'll ever be able to just let it go? Oh, I doubt it. I doubt it. I've, I mean, the Janet you're speaking to now and the Janet a year from now are completely two different people. I have, I have learned to relax so much more, but it's still, I'm on edge a lot, you know, definitely the Dexcom totally helped, um, helped with that. But then sometimes you, you know, when you get a low in the middle of the night and then you call him and he's like, Oh, I just checked. I'm at, I'm at 101. I'm fine. So it's, it's that part of it is what scares me the most because I want to trust the Dexcom, which I do 99% of the time, but then it'll still wake me up and freak me out in the middle of the night. And yeah. then it, it was a compression low. So, and I get it. It's a, mecha- it's a machine. Things are going to happen. But I think me, me having to put so much trust into everyone else and I have zero control is, is probably a struggle I'm probably never going to get rid of completely. You might. You'd be surprised. Um, yeah. Maybe the G7. True. I'm hoping that the flatter aspect of the G7 might keep it from experiencing compression lows the same way. I don't know if it will or not, but I'm hopeful about that. Yeah. Um, and it's smaller. I'm liking the fact that it's smaller because Leo does have some issues with the adhesives, you know, of of um, not sticking on or sometimes he'll... So I don't know, is this a thing? Sometimes he'll, he puts it in too hard or too deep where it draws a little bit of blood. And then that blood will just seep into the surrounding adhesive. And then the adhesive won't, won't last. I would not think of it as being too deep. He probably just nicked a vein like, okay. or, or a little blood vessel, I should say. And um, okay. that does happen. But once it's, once it happens, you can kind of rinse it away before it gets to the, um, before it gets to the adhesive. Okay. So we just, I wick it out with a, a tissue. Like I twist a, a clean tissue up and just stick it in there and wick the blood away. And then the bleeding stops before it gets to the adhesive. Um, okay. I, ha- I have seen people get more of a gusher and they'll just kind of jump in the shower real quick and let it okay. like, like let water run through it until the bleeding stops. Um, but also Dexcom right now, if you call them, He'll, they'll send him overlay patches to put over it that work really well. Oh yeah, and we've done that. We've done that as well. Okay, it just gets his skin gets so irritated at certain times. But I think if I'm remembering the conversation correctly with the G7, the overlays are just going to come with it, so you won't even oh. have to ask for them separately. They'll just be there. Oh, so, that's perfect. So that'll be cool too. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, I you, have to deal with my impatience. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were really terrific. Were you nervous or you were okay? Um, I was nervous. I was nervous. Um, it, it's it's re- actually really surreal, like having you talk to me, me hear your voice and me actually talking back because I'm so used to hearing your voice talking to somebody else. Um, so it was really surreal. I was nervous, but I'm, I mean, I've done a lot of public speaking, so I, I was a, I wasn't shaking or anything, but yeah. yeah, I was, I was a little apprehensive. <laughs> I thought you did great. I thought whatever level of nerves you had, you pretty much held on to the entire time, but they oh. didn't, that they didn't seem bad. Like they weren't overwhelming. Oh, so well, I that's thought, good. I thought good you did great. Didn't come across so, that way. Yeah, so I do good. tend to talk fast when I get nervous though. So no. I don't know if you're going to have to slow me down or something. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, it, are you kidding? I love when people talk quickly. I, I'm always <laughs> slowing myself down thinking like, Oh, don't talk so quickly. And you were going like a mile a minute. I was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> Plus I didn't have to talk as much. This is like a, like, <laughs> It's like I showed up at work today and somebody started doing my job for me. So it was perfect. Oh, well, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. (laughs) A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, 
Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G V O K E G L U C A G O N dot com forward slash juice box. After you check out Gvoke, head to touchedbytype1.org. Check out their programs and don't miss that golf outing. It's coming up quick, but there's still time to register. If you're enjoying the show, why not subscribe in your favorite audio app like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music. There's so many to choose from. Once you get into that app, find the show, Juicebox Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes, and hit subscribe or follow. That was so upbeat. <clears throat> and hit subscribe or follow. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, please subscribe. It helps the show. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juicebox Podcast.